Welcome to Obamacare Revisited. I want to talk about the filibuster, which uh, Senator, Senator Ted Cruz made against Obamacare. And some people have criticized him because he read a children's book as part of his filibuster. And that is according to the rule. You can find any manner of ways to make it relevant. You can, you know, that's one good thing about the Senate is that if you can, it doesn't have to be strictly, strictly common sense in the sense of what people usually think of as common sense. If it can be tangential, if it's a tangent, and if you don't know, like it can just, just, just grazing, it just slightly touches the topic. But that, those are important things. It, 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 allows, it allows a different element of thought to enter into the decision making so that we don't become stodgy and stupid. The Senate allows unique thinking because it allows different ideas to happen. And that's a good thing. Senator Ted Cruz did a good job, but he could have made it more easily understandable for people. I don't think he really tried to make people understand at that moment what he was doing, but what he did was actually very subtle. He was, uh, they were, dealing with the issue of Obamacare, which is government forcing people to buy health insurance that they did not want, did not ask for, without your choice. Like, for example, if Obamacare were passed and funded, then I would be forced to accept the socialized, socialist healthcare system. I would be forced to accept it. And the fact that Obamacare is a Christmas tree bill, I would be forced to accept a bajillion other things. You know, the, the, the document was like several inches high. So this, whole, this one law is like, if you lay it flat on a table as a book, it's bigger, it's thicker than a Bible. It's thicker than the dictionary. This thing was more, more stuff in that law than there is in a dictionary. It was a very, a lot of material. And apparently, and this is, you know, some, some senators and representatives asked him, uh, what's in this bill? What is in here? And then the, the people who are on the side of the bill, the Democrats on the side of the bill said, you have to pass this bill to find out what's in it. So in order for us to find out what's in this bill to see if we're gonna pass this into law, you're not allowed to know what's in here. You just have to pass this law and then we'll tell you what you got. That doesn't make any sense. Here, I'm gonna write you a contract. We're gonna do business together. You don't know what's in the contract. You have to sign the contract to find out what's in it. Does that make sense? That's the exact, exactly what happened with Obamacare. But the main issue of Obamacare is that your, the government is, would, would have been and was forcing people to buy something against their will without your permission. It's the idea that the government has the right to force you to own and buy a car even if maybe you don't want it. It's the opposite of capitalism. It's the opposite of democracy. It's the op opposite of a Republican, capitalistic, free society. And the, by definition, a free society is a capitalistic society because a free society, a liberal society, means that people get to make their own choices and do whatever they want. If people get to do whatever they want, then people aren't gonna be forced to, to buy something that they that they that they don't want. If you're mandating that people have to own and buy certain things, then they don't have control of their own money, you do. By definition, a free society, a liberal society, lets people make their own choices, and that means that Obamacare is not a liberal free society. It doesn't it's not about a free power to the people and freedom of people to make their own choices. If you really are a liberal, then you must believe that people are liberal and free to do whatever they want with their own money, with their own property, etc. and so forth. And this is the idea of being a classical liberal. People call themselves liberals today, but they are not liberals. They are leftists. They are autocratic. They are oligarchical. You believe in a strong central government to tell you what to do, that people don't have the right to make their own choices and do what they really want to do. It, when it comes down to it, the government has that choice. And more and more, you want a society that is controlled and defined and laid out for you. You don't want to have to figure it out yourself. You want the government to, to do it for you, to shape society. Whereas if you are a liberal, a liberal, 
a free person, a liberal person, by definition, that means you want people to make their own choices. You want people to be free, to make their own path, to take their own course of life. Without being controlled by a government, that's the opposite. That's autocracy. That's oligarchy. That's authoritarianism. And by and large, the, the, the liberal left, the, the, the leftist mainstream left, the Democrat Party, and everyone who associates themselves together there, is authoritarian, whereas conservatives are anti-authoritarian. We are democratic. We conservatives are democratic. We are liberal. We are, in the sense of we want freedom and libertarian, we're free. Liberta we are classical liberal. We are conservative because we're trying to conserve liberal values. We are trying to have a small government where people choose make their own choices, not the government. We don't want someone to be the boss over you. We want you to make your own choices. We trust you to do that. But it comes at the cost of moral accountability. So at the expense of you get to live your own life, it does require that people have good morals. And by the way, quite separately from that, most conservatives, we do individually believe in absolute, genuine moral truth. We believe that the truth is out there. And that's something I want to tell you. The truth is out there. It's not like we live in a universe without truth. That's not true. We do have truth. This universe is a truth universe. The, the truth is out there. The truth is there to be found. If you look for it, you'll find it. The problem is most people don't want to have the truth because they want to be their own boss. And here's the choice. Do you want to be the boss of your life or the boss of the morals of the universe? Some people, they would rather be, live a life of slavery where they get to have, so that the, their life is, they don't have control of their own life, but they get to do whatever morals, whatever bad morals they want, they get to make their own moral rules. Other people, like myself, we can see that there is a truth to the universe, that there is a moral truth in this universe. It's given to us by God, and God's name is Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of the Bible, the 66 books of the Holy Bible. Majority text, Textus Receptus, if there's any question about that. But we believe that there is a standard, already understood moral truth of the universe. And that some people don't like that. Some people are in rebellion against that. But the universe doesn't care. The universe stands by its own morals, and we either obey them or don't obey them, but the morals are there. There, there is, there is the, the, it is the written in stone. The dividing line is there. It exists. Can't be denied. Some people do deny it, but they can't, but it doesn't change the reality is what I'm trying to say. The reality is still there. So conservatism, yes, we choose to be obedient to morals, to the truth, to moral and literal truth. No. Moral truth is literal truth, so I, I misspoke there. We choose to be obedient to moral and physical truth, moral and historical truth, because moral truth is literal, but it is not physical. It is in charge of physical things. For example, every single crime you could possibly commit does have to do with something physical. Even, even uh, identity theft is stealing, you know, stealing money, and money is a physical thing. Even digital money is, in a way, a physical thing. Morals are in control of physical things, but morals themselves are ideas that, that exist in the universe. So, yes, conservatives choose to be obedient to spiritual and philosophical morals that are in the universe, but we choose to be, to live free and to control our own lives. Whereas a leftist does not want to be told what morals to live by, and as a result, they're willing to trade being dominated to be slaves under a king, under a queen, under a dictator, under an oligarchy, under even an authoritarian system of fascism. 
But what is true freedom? If you're a, a liberal, true freedom is that people get to live how they want. They get to do what they want. People are free. People can go where they want and do what they want. But the ability to do bad things because no one is going to tell you what to do morally, is that really freedom? <clears throat> I mean, your ability is to, to do whatever morals you want or immorals you want. It, does it make you free or is it just your personal choice? Your personal choice doesn't help anyone else. Like if you want to live your own lifestyle, that may help you, but it's not affecting anyone else. It's not representing society. And I, I put the question to you and I'll just give you the answer also. It's not freedom. It's choosing to do what you want despite the objective truths of the universe. He said the universe says this, the the spirit the spirit you know the spiritual morals of the universe say this, which are given by God, say this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So you could say that it's rebellion. It's rebellion against and not only that, leftists don't like history. They don't like they don't like the facts. They don't like reality. They're having a battle with real reality because they want reality to be whatever they say it is. They want reality to be like the holodeck on S the Starship Enterprise. Whatever you want it to be, it can be whatever you want it to be. So if they don't like a story, if they don't like a history, if they don't like the facts of what happened two days ago, they'll, they'll lie. They'll try to change it because they believe that by speaking that the, that the reality is different, they think that they can really change reality. But that's not true. They think they don't like facts. They don't like reality. They want to have a belief systems and, and systems of society that are ideal, ideological, but it doesn't matter if they work. And But here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. Aside from that, it doesn't work. And it's not based on facts. They're based on... They're based on reversed morals. They're based on evil. They draw a spiritual and a philosophical source for their belief systems. That it, and, and so they're saying they want to have a, a moral system. But where are they getting their moral system? They're saying this is our spirituality. This is our moral system. This is what we do. You see, we have an ideological system, and it may or may not work, but oh, look, isn't it good? Isn't it a good idea? Really? Now, wait, wait a second here. We need to question. They're giving us these morals. They're giving us these morals, and I will get back to Ted Cruz. They're giving us these morals, but the morals are bad morals. The morals they're giving us are evil morals. They're false morals. It's fake morals. It's fake spirituality. It's fake moral rules. They have a code. You can make yourself a code. You know, if you look at Star Wars deeply, the, the Sith, they're bad guys. They're evil. Anyone will say that. It's they're not good, they're not wise, and they're not righteous, and they're not worthwhile. They are scum. And it's not good to be scum, and it's not good to be a villain, and it's not good to be a bad guy. A bad guy. And you know what? They have a code. They have a religion. The Sith have created their own morals for themselves to say that they are righteous and wise and good for what they're doing, but it is baloney. And if you want to go look up the Sith code, it's on the internet, all over the internet. You can look at the Sith code. And they use these ideas. They, they appropriate, they, they take ideas and they misuse them in order to make themselves a moral code that justifies themselves, that makes them the hero, even though they're not the hero, that makes them good, even though they are bad. And they're not really being made good. They are just calling themselves good. But calling yourself good 
does not make you good. Being good is because you are being good. Being good is because you are good. And there is an independent, unchangeable truth of what's right and wrong and good and bad in the universe. That is independent of our codes that we write for ourselves. And what the liberals are doing is exactly that. They are writing for themselves a story that makes them into the hero that flatters them. They're flattering themselves. They're writing themselves a moral code, but it's based on something that's actually bad. And the morals that they're giving, they're, they're writing you a moral code that's actually bad, that's actually evil, that's actually immoral, that's actually cruel and brutal and rough and unkind and selfish. And they're calling it good. They're calling it heroism. They're calling it kindness, but it's the most unkind, evil, rough, brutal, ruthless, merciless philosophy that there can be. But hey, they, they, they say that they want to give to the poor. They say that that's what it's all about. So that makes them good, right? No. You can make, you can create for yourself a religion. You can create for yourself a, a, a moral system that isn't actually real or true or moral or good at all, but you call it that because you are trying to create and redefine your own universe. You are trying to create and redefine your own spiritual hegemony of what exists in your created universe. You are trying to create a spiritual pyramid of what you believe in is right. You're trying to create a new spiritual system and you're calling evil good, and you're calling goodness evil. You're calling heroes villains, and you're calling villains heroes. And this is the same thing that they have the same problem with reality, too. They have, they're trying to do the same thing with reality, history, the facts of the case. You know, they don't care that Donald Trump literally did nothing wrong with the Ukraine. We have his phone call, he released it. He didn't have to release it, he chose to release it. That's his free will there. They have no legal right to force him to release his phone call, but he chose to release it in order to show that they're wrong. It was a very friendly phone call and it was a very plain common sense phone call. You can go listen, Glenn Beck just reads the phone call. There's a transcript, he read it. It's kind of revealing how much, it's just, a, it's very easy, very simple phone call. It's not. There's really nothing to impeach about. Okay, so, but they don't care. They want to, to they want to make something up because they want to create their own reality. They hate reality. They don't. They hate the morals that exist right now in the universe. They want the universe to have a different set of morals, so that their unrighteous, evil ideas can prosper. Because the problem is their ideas cannot prosper inside of this universe as it stands right now because the morals and the, the logic of this universe do not work for them. So they want to create something that's different. But they don't realize that if they did that, or maybe they do, but they don't realize that if they did that, they would literally be recreating hell and the universe would, would be a, a hell hole. It would really be awful to live in a universe dictated by what they've imagined for themselves. They've they wrote, they wrote a story. They don't realize that if their novel became reality, it would suck for everyone to live in it. Oh. So, now let me get back to Ted Cruz. Because, you know, why do I go on this tangent? I go on this tangent because people who are listening get triggered. And if you don't de... If, you don't, if I don't spend 10 or 20 minutes derailing the moral, uh, the defeater, the defeater argument. Um, there's a Christian apologist and he talks about this. You know, there's the, the, the knee-jerk reaction like, but what about this? Oh, you can't say that because what about this? They won't let, you can give a whole, a whole argument, but because you failed to deal with one point that trips people up, it trips you up and stops you right there dead in your tracks. If you don't stop things dead in their tracks, you know, you can't make your argument. So 
if I make my whole argument for Ted Cruz and against Obamacare without completely demolishing the idea that liberalism truly is the house, the seat of morality, the seat of goodness, they're the compassionate party, they're the morality party, they're the party of goodness, those, de those Republicans are, are brutal and rough and selfish authoritarians, no. In fact, it is exactly the opposite. Conservatives are anti-authoritarian, we are individualist, and we are the party of morality. We want, mora we want morals. We want to, 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 we want to acknowledge the, the, what's right and wrong and good and, and bad and heroic and villainous and true and false as what they are. We want to keep morals. Whereas, and, and, and what we want is freedom for people to do whatever they want. Whereas liberalism is the exact opposite. We want people to be controlled with authority, with an authoritarian slave master who is control, who owns you and controls you and tells you what to do. But to, as a trade-off, you get to have whatever kind of morals or anti-morals you want. You can be good or evil, or you could primarily you can be evil without anyone yelling at you, and no one can t morally tell you what to do. But as a result, you have to follow the strict obedience of the slave master who's going to control you. And he's going to boss you around. Who's going to be your king. You're going to have to have a king and a tyrant and a dictator to control you. But you can do whatever, whatever immoral, bad stuff against God and against the universe that you want and against other people. And who can, who, how dare anyone question you? The, why am I spending all this time? Because I'm... If I don't take the extra time to to show you that the the moral claim of liberalism is false, if I don't take the time to show you that liberalism does not have is not the seat of morality. It's not the the throne of morality. It's not the the beacon. There's no there's no some, there's nobody holding the torch though with the bright shining light of morality here. No, that's the conservatives. Then that's Jesus Christ and that's the Bible. And that's America, cons American conservatives in, term in, in, the, in America. It's not liberalism. It's the exact opposite. If I don't, it's a common myth. It's a myth. It's mythical. Mythical liberalism, which you should call mythical leftism. It's the myth that somehow liberalism is the side of morality when it is not. And that, oh, we're, ideo we're ideological. We have an ideology, maybe it doesn't work too good, but we want it to work because isn't it so wonderful and moral? No. And here, I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. Adolf Hitler and his Nazis, the fascist German Nazis of 1935, are ideological. They're extremely ideological. They are a hardcore, radical ideology. They are ideological. And so was ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Or what they called the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant because they wanted to destroy Israel because they're ideological. Being ideological does not make you good. You can have an evil ideology. Darth Vader is extremely ideological because he believes deeply in the Sith Code. He de believes deeply in the philosophy and the lifestyle and the belief system and the religion the religion of being a Sith. Because being a Jedi is a religion. And being a Sith is a religion. It's a spirituality. It's a religion. And it's a belief system and it's an ideology. You can be extremely ideological. That doesn't make you good. Because your ideology can be pure evil. And the worst, the most dangerous kind of ideology is an ideology that pretends to be a good guy and that actually thinks that they're correct. If you are, are, if you are evil, but you think that you're actually good, then you are the most dangerous form of evil because with complete self-confidence and complete self-righteousness, you are going to squish and squash and destroy everyone in your path because you believe that you are good and you think that everyone else around you is evil and that you think that you're justified and you don't question yourself and you don't show mercy. Whereas conservatives, we want the opposite. We want to have a small government where people aren't being forced to do stuff, where there's no strong hand controlling everyone. 
you know, people are basically being left alone. We can gather together in community. We can be friends. We can do what we want. No one is controlling us and dividing us. Threatening us to have to run away or die. When there's freedom, there's safety to, to gather. So, I think I've said enough. Now I want to get back to Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz read the children's story as part of his filibuster, Sam I Am, or uh, Green Eggs and Ham. And the whole story, if you haven't read Dr. Seuss, and I recommend you should go read it, but it's Green Eggs and Ham. And so there's a character named Sam. He's like, you know, he's one of the, I think he's one of the Who's. He's, he's a, he's one of Dr. Seuss's, you know, sort of uh, animal type people. And uh, he's just going about his day. He wants to mind his own business. No, it wasn't Sam. So Sam, so there's, yeah, so there's Sam, and he has green eggs and ham. And it's a very weird food. It's a weird type of food. And there's another character, and he doesn't want to eat this green eggs and ham. So Sam is chasing, basically chasing this guy around, saying, would you like my green eggs and ham? And he's trying, would you, and he said, no, I do not like them. I do not like them, Sam I am. The purpose is... Sam is trying to force the main character to do something that he doesn't want to do. The idea of the story of Green Eggs and Ham is that you cannot force someone to, to eat Green Eggs and Ham unless they choose to do it, unless they want to do it on purpose. The problem with Obamacare is that you're forcing everyone to have Obamacare and to eat the Green Eggs and Ham even if they don't like it, even if they don't want it, even if they never knew anything about it, even if you're a grand, you're, your grandchildren, a hundred years later, had nothing to do with this, but you're forcing this on them. And by definition, it, it is the government is forcing you to participate in a socialist healthcare system, and you are being forced to buy it, whether or not everyone wants it. It's making it mandatory to be a socialist, to, to, to take socialist medicine. And you can't force that on people. The government can't force you to... It's illegal. It's illegal, but it's also immoral. For the, and it's also authoritarian, and it's not liberal. And for the government to force you to, to buy something that you don't want. If you don't want a car, then the government is not allowed to force you to buy a car. If you don't want... If you don't want to own a house, the government can't force you to own a house. And if you don't want a video game, or if you don't want haggis, I mean, let's take the green eggs and ham. If you don't want to eat the weird food, you shouldn't be forced to eat it. If you don't want a medical care that's of a certain type, you shouldn't be forced to have it. And quite frankly, if I don't want medical care, I shouldn't be forced to have medical care. If I don't want you to give me treatment, it's my body, my choice. I can choose not to have your medical care. If, you want, if you're a doctor or authoritarian politician, you want to force some medical treatment on me, I am not required to receive medical treatment from you. If I have an injury or a sickness or whatever, I have the right to refuse it. I don't have to want to be cured by you or by anyone. So, but here's the thing. Even more than that, and I'm, I'm trying to get back to this, Obamacare is saying that people don't have the choice with their own money. We are not a liberal society, according to Obamacare. And people are told what to do by the government, not the other way around. In a democratic society is where the people tell the government what to do. An authoritarian society is where the government tells the people what to do. A liberal society is where people get to make their own choices with their own money, their own choices with what they want to do with their life, what they want to do, period. 
and authoritarian leftist societies where the government tells you what to do and the government forces you and controls you and it's collectivist, controls you to do whatever they want you to do. Obamacare is communism. It forces you to participate in the economic system of the government and it forces you to buy something that you do not need or want. It doesn't matter if you need it. It doesn't matter if you do want it. You have no choice in the matter. You have no choice. Obamacare says, you have no choice. You have to do this. And if you don't do this, we're going to punish you. And that is fascism. And by the way, Adolf Hitler did create social security and socialized medicine. Adolf Hitler created socialized medicine. That was one of his first things that he did once he got into power. He created socialized medicine. He banned all guns. He made abortions legal. And he created social security. And he got rid of free speech and, and imposed strict hate speech laws. Because when, Ob when, when uh, Adolf Hitler was throwing people in jail because of stuff they said, he labeled everyone as hate speech. And that's how he threw his political opponents into jail because Germany had very, very strict, strict anti-hate speech laws in 1935, continuing through World War II. The, the Nazis threw people in jail for, for what they said politically because of the strict hate speech laws, which made it legal. They just said, hey, you're hating on the Nazi party. Hey, whatever you said is hateful. And that's how Adolf Hitler threw so many people in jail because that's the law he used was the hate speech laws. So yeah, the reason why... Now, Senator Ted Cruz, I don't think he did a good job of explaining why he did what he did. Why did he, he read the children's story? And he's right. I think he did the right thing, though, because he defended the fact that in the Senate, you can be irrational. You, you don't have to explain yourself in the Senate. You don't have to make sense to everyone. Maybe you know what you're doing, but... They don't have to, everyone else doesn't have to understand. You can be subtle. The thing about the Senate is that you can be subtle. You can be artistic. You can be irrational. You can be tangent, a tangential. You say, I'm reading this book because I don't, I really hate Obamacare. And so I'm right, I'm reading this book in protest. And that is totally valid. You can do that in the Senate. And so he took the most even though he actually had a more something much more sophisticated. He read the reason why he chose green eggs and ham was because you cannot force someone to eat green eggs and ham against their will if they don't like it. And if they don't like it, it's, it's wrong, it's evil, it's a crime, it's bad, it's immoral and unrighteous to keep on pestering them and harassing them and bothering them until they finally give up and eat the green eggs and ham. You can't force someone to eat green eggs and ham if they don't want it. That's not liberal and free. That's oppression. Okay? And, you can, and it's wrong to keep on harassing and bothering people until they finally do eat the green eggs and ham. Hey, we can't pass Obamacare the first time. Let's on keep pass trying it again and again and again. Let's just never-endingly, forever, keep on trying to run this bill through Congress until finally they'll give up and just give us what we want. That is called harassment. That's the deeper reason is because the book, Green Eggs and Ham, really has a deep philosophical meaning about forcing people to do things that they don't want to do and then harassing them and, and pestering them until they finally do it for you. They're both bad. It's all bad. And that's why he chose that specific book. It was actually a very poignant, very deep, very sophisticated way to show that idea. You can't force me to take Obamacare. I do not like it, Sam I am. I do not like Obamacare. No, I don't want Obamacare. You cannot make me eat it, Sam I am. Okay, but he did the right thing because he chose to use the most, the most deepest, most true argument for filibustering and talking in the Senate. You are allowed to talk about things, even if they are irrational, that is totally acceptable. Even if you are only doing it out of protest, that is acceptable. So he defended the deepest reasoning, the deepest reason that the, the, house, the house of reps is the house of logic, whereas the Senate is the house of fancy. 
Not necessarily irrationality, but it can be. But fancy, fantasy. You're allowed to think outside the box in the Senate. And that's what it's about. So I, I respect Ted Cruz. And I really wish he would listen to my letter, which I wrote to his office, because I have important information for him. I would really like him to know about. So anyways, God bless you. God bless America. Jesus is Lord. We are one nation under God, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he is the God of the universe. He's the savior of the universe, too. He's the savior of all mankind. He's the Christ, the Messiah, the savior. And, yeah. God bless America, and thanks for watching.